Hi, my name is Kirsty O'Connor and I'm an occupational therapist and clinical training manager at City Matters. I have a background in mental health nursing and I've worked in acute residential and community settings. Um, and then I went back to university and did occupational therapy. The reason why I changed from nursing to occupational therapy, well, this is where I tell you about an experience that happened in my life that it really gave me my light bulb moment. In 2009, I was involved in a really serious car accident where I broke my C2, which is just up here at the top of my cervical spine. And I was wearing a halo brace. And that was to help support my head and my neck and, and heal and help recovery. Um, I also acquired a traumatic brain injury in the, the car crash it was. So I was in a coma for about four weeks and when I woke up, I was temporarily paralyzed from the waist down. Um, What's that like? Oh. <laughs> First, when the doctors told me that I had broken my neck, I honestly didn't believe them. I thought, because as well, I was on a lot of medication, so I was hallucinating quite a lot. So I just thought this was another dream, another hallucination. But as the medication started to wear off and I started to become a lot more lucid, I, I realized that this was my reality. This had actually happened. The first thing that I had asked my mother when I woke up was, is my daughter okay? I always bring her to creche before I go to university. Apparently my mother told me that I begged her to mind her the day before. And I've never asked my mother when I'm at college to babysit my daughter. So I have no understanding, no reason why that happened. When the police came to my mother's door the next day and said, is there a child here? Your daughter's been in an accident. They said that they found pieces of a car seat in the bushes and they were looking for a child in the bushes. So she should have been in the car. On the weekend, my mother brought my daughter in to visit me and she wanted to hug me, but when she hugged me, she hit her head off the metal cage and then she started getting upset and crying. And that was the moment right there where I said, I am not living this way. That I commit to the rehabilitation program that was in that hospital at the time and I get myself back on my feet to look after my daughter. I was under the care of the whole MDT. So there was the neuropsychologists and the neuroconsultants and the doctors and the nurses. And on the allied healthcare team then, there was the physiotherapists and the nutritionists and the speech and language therapists, psychologists, and they were all great. But they'd all tell me things like what I couldn't do, but it was actually the occupational therapist who, when I met her the first time, she looked at me and she said, what do you want to do? What's important to you? But what she did was she gave me my self-respect, she gave me my self-dignity, and she gave me a voice in my recovery. And I won't forget that. Yeah. You know, I want to go back and finish my nursing degree at university. Um, I want to take care of my daughter independently again. And I want to get back behind the wheel of a car again. And two months after my discharge, I was back driving again. Six months after my discharge, I returned to university. And that semester, I actually got my first ever A in university. And because I met that occupational therapist, she inspired me to pursue occupational therapy. I wanted to help people just like she helped me. I enrolled in the Masters of Occupational Therapy course and I graduated from my Masters in 2017. I like to tell people my story because I like to give people an insight into why I became an occupational therapist and why I wanted to work at City Matters, whose main goal was to identify new ways and develop products to help patients and to help caregivers and improve patient lives. 
I hope that it reminds other occupational therapists of the impact that they can have on their patient's recovery. You know, as occupational therapists, we do things every day for our patients and we may not see the value straight away. I think we should take a moment and consider the impact that we have on our patient lives and the power of OT.